This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this special edition of uh, our weekly learning, uh, our share at Rabbi Landau this week was canceled because my wife was in the hospital. Baruch Hashem, she's home now. And uh, I'm recording this share special for my subscribers and for uh, other venues uh, from our home with gratitude to Hashem that uh, my wife has returned home and of course for her continued refuah shalema, Miriam Liba Bastavora. Um, due to the fact that the share was pushed off, uh, it's going to get into the mail later. And although it's called Special Tshuva Thoughts for the Aserus May Tshuva, the ideas are good even if you get it in between Yom Kippur and Sukkot as well. Uh, today's shir is dedicated specially by my good friend Yoel Klugman and family. Lili Nishmas Meshulam Ben Moshe, Chava Bas Yudaka and Klugman, and for the successful Shidduchan of their children. We'd also like to thank my good friend Dr. and Mrs. Binyamin Panzer for all that they do. And we, uh, as always, learn that all those that have been touched by the dread Machna, known as Yanamachla, and other related diseases should have Rafush Lema Besek Shech Ali Yisrael. All of us and our loved ones should always be healthy. All those that are waiting their shidduch should find it quickly and easily. All those that are waiting children should be blessed with Zara Chaya Vekayama. Healthy mommy, healthy baby. We should have Parnasa Berevach Vechavayt and Langer Gesund Tazisa Shalom Bayis. The Gemara in Erevin on Daf Yud Gimel on Medbeis tells us, Tan Rabbanan, Shtei Shonim Umachza for two and a half years Nechleku Beishami Beisilil, Beishami Beisilil argued. Halaluaimim, one group said, Noich loy la'adam shaloy nivra yoysim ishenivra. It's better that a person would have not been brought into this world. While Halaluaimim, while the other group said, Noich loy la'adam shaloy nivra. What do you mean? This is a, a place of great opportunity. And the Eternal rewards are stupendous. So it's better for a person to be created. Now, let's pause for a moment and reflect on how extraordinary this is. You know, there are many machloikis in Shas. Yir Shalom Midas. Right? Tam Ke'ikir. Zeva Zegairim. Tchilas B'Pshia V'Saifa Bainas. There are many arguments in Shas. How long do you think they spent arguing about them? Here you have a raging argument that went on for two and a half years. And you, could you imagine? It almost sounds funny. My wife asks me, my Shemayer, what are you learning about in the base Medrash? We're learning whether it's worthwhile to be born or not. How many years are you going to spend on that topic? How many years are you going to spend if it was worth being in this world? And they spent on this philosophical topic two and a half years. And even more surprising, when they voted at the end, Nimnu Vigamru, they voted and they concluded, It would have been better off that a person not be born. In other words, Lloyds of London would not put a good bet on a person uh, succeeding at life. And there's a better chance that a person will mess up, end up being punished, and end up being an him. That's an astounding conclusion. Now, we shouldn't be surprised. We find, for example, in Gemara and Tanis, that Rabbi Chuzah saw in the Shuka, Rabbi Broika Chuza, saw in the Shuka de Beilef, he met in the great mall of Beilef, Eliyahu Anavi. 
and he asked him, is there any Ben Oilam Abba in this teeming mall? And Eliyahu Navi initially said, no, not one Ben Oilam Abba. Gemara Menachis tells us that Oilam Abba was created with the Yud, the smallest letter, because very few people got there. It's not a, it's not a sure bet at all. The Yitzhar is very fierce. For that matter, that's why the Mephoshim tell us that we don't say a bracha in the morning, a very uh, uh, clean bracha. Bracha to Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Elum, Sheosani Yisrael. That's a great bracha. You know what it sweepstakes it is to be born a Jew? You know what it means to be born from the Amanifcha, from the chosen people? To have, if we don't mess up, a spot in all Olam Abba, Kol Yisrael, Yeshem, Chedel, Kol Abba. So why don't we make a bracha, Shasana Yisrael? And the answer is because the Gemara decided that it's better for a person to not have been created. So we can't thank Hashem that He made us. But we could thank Hashem that He didn't make us a guy, that He didn't make us a slave. That He didn't make us a woman that we don't have, that we wouldn't have the midst of learning and Mila and Tefillin. So what is it that it's better that a person not be created? So we should see what the Gemara says afterwards. So they voted that it's better for a person not to have been created than to be created. However, continues the Gemara, Achshav Shenivra, now that a person already was created, Yefash Veish Bamaisev, let him constantly be checking and evaluating his deeds to see what can be corrected. The Imre Law and others say, Yamash Mesh Bamaisev. Let him feel his good deeds for imperfections. So Rav Shach explains that the reason why it's better for a person not to have been created, Rav Shach, Zechitzadik Levrach, Schusa Yagan Oleinu, the great God of Eretzor that outlived almost all of his peers, Rav Shach explains that most people justify everything that they do. And since they justify everything that they do, they don't correct themselves. Because they're righteous in their own eyes. And therefore, since they don't correct themselves, they they don't better themselves, and therefore it would be better not to be created. Because the purpose of creation is to change and improve yourself. You're not going to get any credit for the raw materials. To the contrary, people ruin themselves because of the Yetzirah. So if Shach says it's better for a person not to be created because everybody justifies what they do. But now that we're created, therefore we have to make it a mission to constantly check our deeds and see what needs to be changed. What needs to be uh, purged. And what good things need to be improved. He says that we have to remember, that's the way we make our life worthwhile. So it means, like I quoted to you in another shir, when in a Matzi Shabbos question and answer in the early years of Rav Shraga Feivel, Mendelovich, Rav Shraga Feivel, was asked, what's the most important thing? And he said, Cheshben. To constantly be making an accounting. A Cheshben Anefesh. So that a person says, you know, what kind of a spouse am I? Constantly thinks about it. What kind of a spouse? What is it like to be married to me? A person is constantly looking to improve on the quality of the davening, not to be satisfied with the davening. But now I want to say at the get-go that in the preparation of this year, I enjoyed immensely and incorporated thoughts from a new sefer about tshuva from Rav Emanuel uh, Bernstein from uh, Eretz Yisrael. So it says in Tehillim, Ashrei Nesui Pesha. Now, literally, it means fortunate one who Hashem bears his sins. However, the Medrash says 
Ashrei lo adam shehu gevaya mepishai. Fortunate is a person who's higher than his sins. Veloyshe pishai gevaya mimenu. And not that his sins are higher than him. Now what does that mean? Fortunate is a person who is higher than their sins. In other words, that feels that such behavior, such sins are beneath him. It's beneath him to talk in shul. It's beneath him to scream at home. It's beneath him to look at a woman. Fortunate is a person that feels that way. And by the way, I'd like to add a caveat that that's the way we should be mechanach our children. We should be mechanach our children that I expected more from you. Such behavior, fighting with your sister, shouting at your mother, that's beneath you. That doesn't befit a person like you. This is the derech of Rabbi Yisrael Salante, Gadla Sa'adam. You're, 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 you're above average. I don't expect this from you. On the other hand, woe to the person whose sins are higher than him. What does that mean? Now, there are several meanings to that. One is like we said from Rav Shach, his sins are higher than him, meaning that he justifies his sin. Here's a person that's engaged in a machlaikis, but he convinced himself it's L'Shem Shemai. It's for the sake of heaven, that's what we say to Yaakov Avinu when he battled with the Malach. There's one explanation that the Malach looked like a Talmud Chacham, which means that a person eh, justifies what they do. So the sin looks like it's high. I've seen people. They engage in fights, but they do it L'Shem Shemai. Uh, another meaning of that the sin is higher than him I believe is that I'm not on that madrega. Yeah, I know there's people, they never schmooze about other people. Yeah, I'm, uh, that, that's too lofty for me. Yeah, I know the people that don't go to shows, the Broadway shows. Yeah, but that's a, that's a high madrega. You see, that's woe to a person that the sin is higher than him. And then there's a third pshat. What does it mean that the sin is higher than him? He says, you can't expect that from me. This is who I am. This is who I am. I go make swimming, you know. This is who I am. So, uh, of course, we're not mocking in that kind of sneers. That's not who I am. Woe to the person that the sin is higher than them. In Vidoy, we say, Sarnu mi mitzvah I turned away from your mitzvahs. U mishpatecha atoivim from your good laws. V'loi shavalana. Now the literal meaning of that, that we all have kavana is, Sarnu mi mitzvah yisecha, mishpatecha atoivim. I turned away from your mitzvahs. You know, I didn't learn this year. I didn't go to Minyan. V'loi shavalana. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. I didn't benefit from it. But I'm much better off. All those Sundays that I didn't go to the shiurim, I didn't have any special Sundays. Well, I shovel on them. Much better for me if I would have racked up the schlusim of learning. However, the Vilna Gain, Zechatzadik Vrachas Chusayag and Aleinu, says another pshat in Veloy Shavalana. He says, Veloy Shavalana. And because I turned away from your mitzvahs, Veloy Shavalana, it didn't have value anymore. This is the concept that when you're over Vishana, when you do something a lot of times, Nasa it becomes permitted. I'll give you an example. Here's a person, he doesn't have Kavana in his dominant. At the end, it doesn't even bother him that he's not having Kavana because he's done it so many times, it's business as usual. The lay shovel on it. The davening doesn't even have any value. It's, a, it's something that has to be done. But he goes to shul and he didn't have it kavane in a word of Yismach Moshe. 
He didn't have kavana in a word of Atta Echad and Mincha. He didn't have kavana at all in the special insertions in Pesukah Zimrei whatsoever. But he came out of shul and he had a good morning in shul. Well, it doesn't even have a value to him anymore. That's a disaster. And therefore we have to know that tshuva is not enough. I feel bad I didn't have kavana. But we also need tahara. Ki aleichem, I will atone for you. But letar eschem, what does it mean to purify? Because you see, when you do an aveira, it causes, or you don't do a mitzvah, it causes a timtum aleif. It causes, it, it stuffs, it dulls the heart. And we need Yom Kippur to take away that dullness. That <laughs> how many people they go to Kriya Satira and they don't listen. Uh, their mind is wandering like a space cadet because they become dull. They become dull. It's lost its luster. It doesn't have a value anymore. That's why we say, Hagoyel mi mavis, when Hashem forgives us, he, he saves us from death, and he re- re- redeems us from, from ruin. Now, the word pidyon means a transformation. Like when you make poida hektish, you tr- transform it from holy to chul, to mundane. So we ask Hashem not only to save us from death by atoning our sin, but also He should redeem us. We should have a transformation. We shouldn't have that dullness. That, by the way, that concept of pidyon is that's why it says Mimitzrayim Galtonu, you saved us from Egypt. But we had, we had the uh, mentality of slaves after 117 years of forced slavery. So you, you, you redeemed us from that slavery. And when we say that, that means that sin clouds our vision. And Mamish clouds us. You know, there's a, there, there's a magic of a Jewish marriage. It's, it's a, a wonderful thing, right? It says that a wife is toiv. It says that isha toiv. But if a person neglects the marriage, it doesn't feel like toiv anymore. Sin clouds you. That's why it says mochisi ko'ov pisho'echa. You should... Uh, dissolve like a cloud the sins. And like clouds, uh, iniquities, uh, rebellion, sin, because a sin cloaks and clouds our proper vision. Now, we know on Rosh Hashanah we said, Ashrei Ha'am. Hashem Of all the components of the Tkiya We mention all the time the Srua, that's that uh, truncated sound. We have in the liturgy of Shachris on the second day, Melech Memaleit Meira Liode Serua. The king who saves us from evil to those that know the Serua. We call it a Yom Trua. So there's many significances to the Trua. But I, before Shaifer in my shul, this Rosh Hashanah, I talked about two of them, which I think are important. One is that 
in order to get into the good habits for the coming year, we need repeat performances. In other words, a person has to repeat certain behaviors to get into the right habit. Like making an Asha Yotza. Most people say the Asha Yotza without any... They say an Asha Yotza, but it's while they're walking. Well, they, they, they don't even remember if they said it or not sometimes because they don't... They don't, they don't, they don't pay any attention. A person has to break that habit. And after doing it a bunch of times, he'll do it the right way. But he has to say, I'm going to think about the coven, the coven, my openings, my eyes, my ears, my other offices, and my halul and my hollow areas, my kidneys, my heart, my brain, my pancreas, my spleen, my liver, right? If one would open, hemorrhage, or yisasem, or be stuffed, clogged, or tumas rachmanulatzlan, yafshel the sky. So a person does that a bunch of times, then 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 he'll do it right. You know, a man told me that he he overheard a wife saying something nice to her husband, saying something pleasant. And he said to me, you know, I don't remember my wife ever doing that, being pleasant to me. It's possible you're a spouse, a husband or a wife, that very, very greatly neglects your spouse. The first thing is you have to be nice. The next step, there's something more than nice. The next step is to be tender. That's the job of a spouse, to be tender. It's more than nice. Nice, we're supposed to be nice to everybody. Tender leads to chiba, leads to intimacy. That's tenderness. So you got to get into the habit. You say, and don't wait for the other spouse to give it to you. You initiate it. That's your job. And do it a bunch of times. Da, 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 That's true. It could be a Maidani. It could be a Kriyash Malamita. But do it a bunch of times. It could be giving tzedakah by every davening. Getting into the habit of Ani B'Tzedek Echa Zeponecha. It could be calling a parent on a regular basis. Da, 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 da. That's Yom Trua. That's number one. Number two is in 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 Sabatka they believed very much in auto suggestion and in saying something over and over and over again in order that it should penetrate the heart. Remember, we said a lot of times that. Rabbi Yisrael Salanta said the biggest distance in this world is from the mind to the heart. It's one thing to know something. It's a completely different thing to feel it. So you'll say, Rabbi Weiss, what's the difference? It's a simple difference. I turned to a group of 100 people in shul and I asked, does everybody believe that Hashem listens to your tefillah? Nobody will say, I don't believe. From a people, nobody will say, I don't believe. But most people don't feel it because if they felt it, they wouldn't be able to Daydream during Dominic. They believe it intellectually, but they don't feel it. How, how do you bring something from the head to the heart? How do you do that? How, how do you bring from the Tfilm Shal Reish to the Tfilm Shal Yad connected to Leif? How do you do that? So the answer is in the Haggadah Shal Pesach. Where we say, "Afilu kolano chacham kolano nevayim kolano yadim mesatayra mitzvah lein lusaper b'itzis mitzrayim." Even if we all know, know it, we all understand it. We're all old. Still, it's a mitzvah. Why? If we know it, let's go on to other pastures. The answer is one thing to know it; it's another thing to feel it. And the way to feel it is to constantly repeat it. 
That's the true. Da, 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 the constant repeat the important yesidus of life. If we would really feel that this world is only a corridor, it's only a hallway. Don't make the hallway the Iker. If we really believe, a woman really believes that her job is to be an Azer, to be a help to her husband. Now, if a woman really believed that, and she'd say, Am I really a help to my husband? Or does he cringe when he's in trouble? Because he knows I'm going to use it against him. Am I really a true helper? She goes over and over again. Like, That's Ashrei Ha'am Yoidei Sarua. The Chinuch, the master of the mitzvahs, says in Mitzvah Kuf Pehe, that's the mitzvah of Yom HaKippurim, that Yom Kippur is a great chesed to us. Because if Hashem wouldn't have given us Yom Kippur, there would be such a build-up, such a pile-up of Averis, that after two or three years Hashem would have to destroy the world. So as a chesed that it shouldn't pile up, he gives us every year a Yom Kippur. Now, Rabbi Bernstein points out a remarkable point. He says that means that Hashem wants our tshuva. A lot of times people say, ah, Hashem is probably so frustrated with me. (laughs) I, I said these things in Vidui last year. It's the same Vidui I say from year to year. Same Vidui. Hmm? You know, in the Lamids, he adds, Lo yispalal nukurai, lo yispalal nukriyashma bezman, lo yispalal tefillah bezman. It's always adding the same things, always saying the same things. Hashem is probably sick of it. To the contrary, Hashem gives it because he knows there's going to be a build-up. It's a very important concept. Actually, we say this concept in our Shemayin Esrei every day. Every day we say in Shemayin Esrei, Baruch Atah Hashem, Horob Tzebiz Teshuvah. That Hashem wants our tshuva. He wants it. We shouldn't feel that Hashem is fed up for, with us. To the contrary, He wants it from us. How much does Hashem want? <laughs> the Rai is, we lay in Yaina. At, at almost the zenith of Yom Kippur, we lay in Yaina. Now, what was the story with Yaina? Hashem told Yaina to chastise Ninveh. But Yaina didn't want to chastise Ninveh because he knew that they would do tshuva. And that would make the Jews that didn't do tshuva look very bad. And it would be a great kateger on Kal Yisrael, that even Goyim, that don't have 613 mitzvahs, that don't have the benefits of Tyre, that don't have the benefits of the legacy of, of thousands of years. They're doing tshuva, and you don't do tshuva. It would be a, a tremendous kitrig on Klai Yisrael. What was Yaina ready to do? He went on a boat, and when the boat started capsizing at sea, he said, throw me off it. So he was ready to go. He didn't know that a fish would swallow him up. He was ready, ready to go to a watery grave rather than cause a kitrig for Klai Yisrael, to give up his life. And we see a tremendous thing from Yaina. But what do we see from there? We see that, that, that Hashem wanted even the tshuva of the people of Ninveh that not only were Goyim, but they were also Avdevay to Zara. So for sure he wants our tshuva. He wants it. A right to the tshuva. Never, nobody should ever say, Ah, Hashem is sick of me already. He wants our tshuva. He knows that it's going to be a pile-up. And we have to know that in this area we have to emulate Hashem. Every year, they look at the name of the year and try to find a simon in it. This year, this new year, it's easy to do. It's Tavshin Ayin Zayin. It's very easy. Tehei Shnas Oiz. 
should be a year of strength. Now, what's strength in Yiddishkeit? So we know the famous interpretation of Ben Zayma, that strength is the ability to say no to temptation. That's why I said, ale means might, because both ale is read either al or loy. The ability to say no is might. So we should be a shnazais, that we should be able to combat our yetzahara. Whatever the Yetzar is, not to look at the wrong things, not to listen to the wrong things, not to say the wrong things, not to do the wrong things. You know, it's a Shnasais. But there's another meaning to a Shnasais, and that's the alternate uh, interpretation of strength in uh, Avastra of Nasan. In Avastra of Nasan, it says, Ezel Gibar. Somebody that makes out of an enemy a friend. That's a giba. That's a giba. Now we have to understand that that's what Hashem does. That even though we behave wrongly, He looks away. And if Anila Dodi, Hashem becomes my beloved. Hashem becomes my friend. Friend. Right? Hashem is right to be tshuvas Hashem makes out of an enemy a friend, and that's the way we have to behave. Now you have to know that most people don't do this. Most people say, "Look, I'm not going to hate him. I won't have anything to do with him. You don't expect me to behave to this guy. I just, I'm not going to hate him. I'm not going to badmouth him. I'm not going to do anything to hurt him." But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go out of my way to befriend him. Uh, I could do much better. But and if you think about it, we find this direct equation in a fa- famous pasuk: Hashem oiz la'amo yitain Hashem yivarech asamay v'sham. Hashem gave strength. What is that strength? The ability to make peace. And Talmidei Chacham mab v'sham ba'elam. That's a special pension of Talmidei Chacham. Now, this is a theme that I want to drive home. And that is that what we do, Hashem will do that to us. That's the idea of the reciprocal behavior. The way I am to my beloved, my beloved will be to me. But the way we are, that's the way Hashem will treat us. So if we make out of an enemy a friend, even if we behave like an enemy to Hashem, for example, the Rabbi Nisham is a Sainai Zima. He hates any types of immor- immorality. But if Hashem sees that we make out of an enemy a friend, he'll make out of us a friend too. Now, We find this idea, for example, it says, Kol Adonis Kaveira Lekavschus, Donenoi Soi Lekavschus. What Rabbi Chaim Shemlev says is a great protection at this time of the year. If you judge your friend favorably, then Hashem will judge you favorably. It says, Amavar Al Midoisav. If you look away, Mavirim Imenu Al Kolpshav, then Hashem will look away from our sins. The Mida of Erechapayim, Hashem will be long suffering. If we're, not, we don't boil over so quickly. And this is all the, if we practice patience, tolerance, looking away. So it's interesting that people find, many people tell me, they find that particularly during these days, they're tested. They're trying to work on their midas, and a spouse, or a child, or a parent, or a co-worker does something to get them very angry. And I can't understand it. During these days, that's the way you behave. And why is Hashem doing that to me? When, 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 I'm trying so hard to work on my midas, especially Ben Kessel Aser during these holy days. So at first I thought 
that the explanation to this phenomena is that Hashem always wants there to be free will, Bechira. But how can there be free will during a service made tshuva? Everybody's on their best behavior. How can there be free will at a time when everybody has a pachar adin? Of course they're not going to do anything wrong. So in order that should be free will, Hashem tests us more severely. Like, for example, the Dordea, the generation of the Midbar. We find that they got tremendous tests, three days without drink. Of course, anybody would cry out. So why were they given such tests? Because they just saw a gvura, gavaya, umofusemis. They saw such open miracles. You see, Mitzrayim, the ten plagues, the Kriyas Yamsuf, with all of its 250 miracles. How could they have Bechira? So Hashem had to give them a big trial, big test, so that they should still have free will. The same thing, Hashem sometimes gives a person a curveball during the 10 days of repentance because it's such a time of yira, of pachad. Right? That's why we add, for example, in, uh, before we take out the Sefer Torah, we don't just say Kadosh Shemai, we say Kadosh Venoira Shemai. It's a time of Naira. It's time of war. So in order for there to be a test, Hashem, you know, makes it a little more difficult. But I think the answer is more than that. I was thinking about it. I think the answer is more than that. Here's a person that was pretty naughty this year, this past year. And really, he could be in a lot of trouble. She could be in a lot of trouble. But Hashem says, you know what? I want to extend to you a life preserver. I want to give you a, a life raft. So somebody is not nice to you and you get a chance to look away. Then Hashem will look away. It's like you get a bunch of envelopes. People say, oh, you know, they really commercialize this time of the year. I'm getting so many envelopes in the mail. Don't look at it that way. You're getting so many envelopes in the mail because Hashem is giving you an opportunity. Tzedakah Tatsum Amav is giving us an opportunity. Look at it that way. You know, on Rosh Hashanah, we said, Imru Lefanai, Malchias, Zichrainais, Vishaifus. Malchias, Psukim, Temp Psukim of Kingship, Kedesh Tamlichuni Alecha. Zichrainais, Kedesh Yalu, Zichrainaicham, Lefanai, Letaivi. You should remember me for the good. Obama, how? Vashaifer. Through the Shaifer. So Reb Tzadik HaKoyin, Zech Tzadik V'Rochus Chusiyog and Aleinu, asks a very simple question. The Rambam says that the main idea of the Shaifer is Uru Yishen Mishin Aschem, to remind us during our service of Tshuva, to wake up from our slumber, to galvanize us, and alarm to do Tshuva. But that's reminding us, but the Gemara says that you should say, Tem Psukim HaZichrainus, that I should remember you, how? Through the Shaifa. But the Shaifa is the way we remember Hashem, not the way that Hashem remembers us. Surah so Tzaddik says, no, it goes hand in hand. Because you have to realize that Hashem doesn't forget. But we want Hashem to remember the good things. How do we get Hashem to remember the, selectively the good things? If we remember about him, then Hashem will remember the good things about us. So that's Pshat Imru Lefanai Zichrainis Kadeshi Alu Zichrainecham Lefanai Lataiva Uba Mehau Ba Shaifer. By the Shaifer, you're remembering me, Uri Yeshein Mishin Aschem. Then I will, in turn, says Hashem, remember you for the good. And that's why it's Rab Bernstein says that we say a posik in the Zichrinus, which doesn't seem to reflect at all Hashem's memory of us. It says, Zecher, one of the ten psukim is, Zecher oisel in the you, you made us a remembrance of your wonders. Chanan v'rachem v'chanan Hashem. Hashem is merciful and gracious. But that's not talking about Hashem remembering us, like Vayiskra Elikim Esnaya. That's saying that Hashem made remembrance of his wonders like Pesach, like Sukkot. So what does that have to do with the Temp Sukkot of Zechariah? The answer is, is when we remember Hashem, then Hashem remembers us. 
It's reciprocal. Like ani le dodi ve dodi li. It's interesting. When we talk about remembering, during our service to make tshuva, we don't blow. I would think, right, we blow the whole hell, we don't blow our service. I would think that this is, we should surely blow during our service to make tshuva. Let people know that there's a, such an opportunity. Dear Shua Hashem, be so seek out Hashem when he can be found. Those are the ten days of repentance. We should surely blow the alarm. The answer is, I believe, is that during the ten days of repentance, the thinking person doesn't need a reminder. I mean, it says, the average person is just hanging in the balance there, between hovering between life and death. Who, who is going to not do tshuva during this time of the year? It's, that would be preposterous. And, and, and also, we're, we're, we, we're, it's a new year, even though we're hopping mitzvahs, we're trying to put a down payment on our on our sukkah, we try, I mean, on our little Vanessa, trying to start our sukkah. We want to put a good foot forward before Yom Kippur, even though, like we explained, it's, it's like if you go to your accountant, you can't declare things that you did after January because that belongs to the next year, not the past year, that you're doing your tax return. So you can't, what we're going to do, what we're doing now doesn't help for last year's cheshman, except for tshuva, that's a racer. But even so, it does help in a different way. Because it helps because we're showing Hashem that we changed. That we're putting a new... It's a new me. It's an, uh, like it says, the, that Hashem, Hashem is not chafetz b'mais ha'meis. Ki yim b'shuv medarkai. So we start learning more. And we start davening better. So we're showing we're changing our ways. It's a new me. It's very important during this, so we understand that. We don't need a reminder. Now, on the subject of Zechreinus, so it says, Ata Zeicher Maisa Eilam. You remember the deeds of the world. It's an interesting phrase. You remember the deeds of the world. So, the Pasuk in Yirmi on Perak Lama Bey's Pasuk Yutes, this is a theme that I've spoken about often. Pasuk in Yirmi says, Asher adam, Your eyes are open to the ways of man. To grant man like his ways. And like the fruit of his deeds. So what is that? It's a double language. You're going to give man... Kidrachov, grant man like his ways and like the fruit of his deeds. Now what does that mean? It means that Hashem doesn't only reward us for the good that we do, but He also rewards us for what our acts generate. Now I'm going to give you a few personal examples. In my family... For many years, we bench out loud. And it's a, it's a game changer. You bench out loud. Everybody has more kavana. It's done sweetly. It's a very big thing. Now, you know why my family does this? Because many years ago, when we ate in the sukkah, only when we ate in the sukkah, there was a family, Zish and Cheryl Jacobowitz, that are a sukkah behind our sukkah. And they bench nicely. And because of that, I liked the way it sounded. It sounded like a wonderful family thing to do that. So therefore, I adapted it. And after I adapted it, my children adapted it. They got married, they adapted it. But more than that, I went ahead and I published Power Benching, where I lauded and extolled this custom, and now families around the globe told me they do it. Now imagine after 120, after 120 long years, Zish and Cheryl, let's say Zish Jacobowitz, is in Shemayim, and the Rabbi Yisham says, oh, here comes the man that taught people all over the globe to bench pleasantly. 
with their families. So Zish looks around, he's in the J line, and he figures that there's a Rebbe behind him that the Rabbi Nishalom is talking to, her, Rosh Hashiva. And he says, excuse me, Rabbi Nishalom, I'm Zish Jacobowitz, the car mechanic, car salesman. So Hashem says, no, no, I'm talking to you. You see, you bench sweetly, and Rabbi Weiss learned how to do it, and because of that, he taught the world how to do that. So that's all accrued to your benefit. So his benching nicely was Kidrachov. But what he generated is Prima Lolov. But Hashem doesn't stop there. Because he wants to know why Zish and Cheryl sing their benching. Maybe they learned it from their parents. So Hashem goes back generations. That's what it means. Ata Zoycher Maisei Olam. That's what it means that Sifrei Chayim Sifrei Meisim Suchim Lefanecha. Because Hashem says, I'm going to open up the books of the dead for all that they caused. That's why Yom HaKippurim is Yom Kippur for the Chayim and the Meisim. Because Hashem sees what accrued from the act. I'll give you an example of this. When I was in seventh grade, my father, Oliver Shalom, was a Holocaust survivor, and saw that the Malamid was treated shamefully in the camps, wanted me to be a doctor. But I had a Rebbe. I had a Rebbe. Rabbi Michal Miller. I had a Rebbe. Rabbi Michal Miller. Rabbi Vigdor Miller's nephew. He was my Rebbe in Yeshiva. Yeshiva Tferis Taira in seventh grade. And he very cleverly, very cleverly figured out that if he convinces my parents to skip me from 7th grade to ninth grade to fast-track me, once I get into the Yeshiva Stanton Lama Ramosha, the rest will be taken care of. So he convinced them. I went to Ramosha, and then Ramosha did the rest. Ramosha convinced my father it's better for me to stay in learning. My father was a big Mike Rabbana. Because I went to Yeshiva Staten Island, all my brothers went to Yeshiva Staten Island. And because they went to the Yeshiva Staten Island, most of the grandchildren went to the Yeshiva Staten Island. My, my boys, my brother's boys, most of the children went. We're talking about now scores of people that went to the Yeshiva Staten Island and that grew up to be Talmud Chacham. Why? Because of Rabbi Michal Miller Olav Hashem. And each time a new person goes to the Yeshiva Staten Island and becomes a big Talmud Chacham, Hashem opens up the account of Rabbi Michal Miller. Sifrei Meisim, Psuchem Lefanecha. That's the way Zichrei Nisar, it's a whole Cheshben. A whole Cheshben. I can give you many examples of this in the biography of Rabbi Miller. Rabbi Miller shows how this works. He says there was a man that gave a smile to a rich man and put that rich man into a good mood. That rich man was met by a Rosh Hashiva who asked him for a donation. But since he was in a good mood, he gave a bigger donation. And the, the Rosh Hashiva was so inspired that he got this big donation, that he came and he gave a specially good cheer to the Talmudim. And they steigen more. And they, all of this was credited to the man that gave the smile. He gave the smile. He generated more Tyra. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing what it means, Kapri Malalov. And therefore a person has to look to try to impact on people to make a nice Amen so that other people will want to say such an Amen. To come to shul a little bit early and sit with a Sefer beforehand, maybe somebody will be inspired to do the same way. To talk nicely to his wife in public. Not to put on a show. Some people will see that and they'll behave nicer to their wives. And you get the credit. You know what it means to convince a neighbor to start learning Daf Yaimi? 
I know people that did this. They went over to someone, listen, you know, I joined the Daf Yemi. It changed my life. My wife respects me more. I have a Kfiya Sitam Lataira. I have a wonderful Chabura. I make sure I'm finishing Masechtas. I never dreamed I'd finish Masechta after Masechta. I can't believe it. You know what it means? Every time that person starts coming and starts finishing Masechtas, Hashem gives you also credit. It's an amazing thing. Now we, we have to remember many people nowadays live in urban areas where there's no water on Rosh Hashanah. So you have to make sure during the Aseris Mechuvah to go to Tashach. Don't forget. Now we know there are re- many reasons for Tashach. We're symbolically throwing out our sins with Sashach. We know that they used to appoint kings by the water, right? Because the water flows, the kingship, the rain should flow uninterrupted. So we're Mamal Hashem as our king. But one of the reasons that it says in the Medrish for Tashlich is because it's Zecher to the Akedas Yitzchak. How is it a Zecher to the Akedas Yitzchak? It's a zeichet to the Akedas Yitzchak because at the Akedah, the Satan wanting desperately to stop Avram Avinu was allowed to disguise himself as a raging torrential river and came to block Avram's uh, passage to Hara Maria. But Hashem plowed through and the waters disappeared. Avram plowed through and the waters disappeared. There's a tremendous lesson from this. And that is we're reminding Hashem, Hashem, we have such a powerful Yetzara. Please take that in, in, into account. That's what we say in the Zechreina. It's Mach Shevois Odom Vesach the thoughts of man and his plans, the Yitzre Malaleish. Please remember how powerful our Yetzahara is. You see how powerful Yetzahara is just from a Yetzahara like smoking. Everybody knows smoking kills people, and yet so many people smoke. So many young people smoke. Because Yetzahara is very powerful. It's cool, it's relaxing, it's study. Yetzirah is so powerful. Everybody else does it. When it's your time, it's your time. Yetzirah is a master. So what we say in V'chol Maminim, V'chol Maminim, Shehu Toiv Lako, Ha-Yoydeya Yetzir, Kol Yitzurim. Hashem knows the Yetzir. He knows our Yetzirah. It's a tremendous... And again, if we contemplate before judging other people that they have big Yetzirahs, don't judge him. He's a big Yetzirah. You know, in the Gemara in Brachis, on Daf Yudzayin Amad Aleph, it says the Tefillah of Rav Alexandri. It says Rav Alexandre Bosset Sluse Amarach. That's a famous Gemara. That's in from that Gemara. That's where Elikai Nitzar comes from. So the Gemara over there says in Brachas Yudzayin that Rav Alexandre says a tefillah. It's a wonderful tefillah. Bosset Sluse Amarach. After his the formal prayer of the Anshei Knesset he would add the following: Rebbein Ha'ilamim, Creator of worlds, Goli. Really, we want to do your will. What's stopping us? The yeast in the dough. That's the Yetzirah. That's called, that's a chomets, it's the Yetzirah. It's the yeast in the dough that, that agitates us. And that was subjugated amongst the guy. You should save us from the Yetzirah and from the influence of the Goyim, that's a very big thing. 
influence of the Goyim, Shibin Malki is a big thing. That's why nobody is Ayvid Avedizar anymore. Nobody has clandestine getchkas hidden in their houses. Why? Because even the Goyim don't worship Abba. We don't, we don't live in a pagan society, so therefore we don't have a temptation. But we live in a very hedonistic society, a very immoral society. That's why we have such temptations. We live in a very materialistic society. That's why. But if Hashem would take away the Shibit Malchius, so then we wouldn't be confronted by these temptations. And if Hashem would take away the Yetzirah, so Hashem, please, I have such a powerful Yetzirah. I get frustrated. I scream, I have a Yetzirah. We ask Hashem to remember who we truly are. That's the idea of Zechreinus. Not to remember how we messed up because of the Yetzar, but what our core is, what our essence is. Right? That's remembering us Ba'ava. So, what shows, what demonstrates what a person's core is, what a person's essence. So the Marpe Loshin, Rabbi Bernstein cites the Marpe Loshin. The Marpe Loshin says from the Zayar, that which we honor is our essence. So I, I wanted to give a few examples of this. You know, what a person showcases in their home shows what's their essence. Now you, sometimes you go into a home, there's no swarm around. They have a big TV on the wall. And they have sports trophies and memorabilia. So they're showing what they honor. You go into a house and it has swarm all over the place. Pictures of G'daylin. Pictures of Kevin Rachel. Pictures of the Kaisel. You see what the person honors. That shows a person's core. It shows a person's essence. That's one example. I thought of some other examples how a person shows what their essence is. Um, one thing is what we use our extra money for. Right? The money that we have left. If we use the money that we have left for tzedakah, for uh, svarim, we use the money that we have left uh, to buy a gift for our spouse. Do we show that our essence is mitzvahs. If we use the money that we have left always just for good times, it shows, you know, money is very greatly intertwined with life. That's why it's stuck as that's my mother's. We spend our life making money. Um, here's another thing. Um, what we teach our children. What we teach our children tells a lot about who we are. If we emphasize our children about sports and about good times or we, we teach our children about learning and about G'daylam and stories about G'daylam, what do we give over to our children? That's very important. Another thing says, May Espedoi Shel Odom Nikim Ben Oilam Abba. And I told you once, my grandfather, Rabbi Nachem Yorovich, explained, from what a person mourns that they can't do. Oh, yeah, I'm not feeling well. I can't go to Minyan. I can't learn. You see what a person, if a person says, Oh, yeah, I can't go out. I can't go to a ball game. I can't, I can't go and have a good time. What does a person complain about? Also, where we put preparation. Like we said, if a person makes hachonis, you don't make hachonis for avelis. If a person puts in great preparation for mitzvahs, so then that shows its importance. Also, what makes us excited? That also shows what our core and our essence is. What we do with free time. The minute a person has a free time, what do they do with it? That also shows during extracurricular time, what do we do? 
that also shows what our core and our essence is. As I said, this was a special shear made for my subscribers. Gives me a chance to thank you for those that subscribe to my CDs and my tapes, some of you for over 32 years plus should know that you've supported me and allowed me to be able to dedicate my life to learning and to Torah and to mitzvahs. If you would like, by the way, to become such a subscriber and get back CDs from the years, some as far as I was just looking at a CD I sent out from Pesach 1989, uh, it's really very simple. It's, you get a CD for 48 weeks every week, first class, for $312. Or you could do it for six months for $156. If you're interested, you could order either by calling me 718-916-3100, 718-916-3100, or text that number. I send you your first CD with a stamp return envelope for a check payment. Or you could do it on, uh, by, by emailing me at rmmwsi at aol.com rmmwsi at aol.com and uh, I'd like to wish all of you and your families a gemar chasima toiva masuka a year of that we, not only we should be healthy but we should know that we're healthy no health scares a year of sweet shalom bias and panos berevach of a year of nachas from children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, a year of good shiduchim, a year of healthy births, a year of shalom, security for Yidin all over the world, especially in Eretz Yisrael, and a year where we see the B.S. Gel Tzedek, B'mherevi Amenu Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.